Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with another custom map from the MapCore Exotic Places Contest. This is Graveyard by Invalid Nick. We got Cole in here. We got Leather Club owner over in CT side. So let's talk about this map. Since it was only by one guy, uh, you may be tempted to excuse the uh, visuals. I think, generally speaking, the Source Engine has never dealt with organic cliffs and rocks, uh, organic materials of any kind, really, uh, very well, uh, just in terms of visuals. So what I would suggest is instead of giving this gentleman a pass for his visuals, not having proper lighting or uh, even uh, proper smoothing or anything like that, you got to understand the limitations of your engine before you start working with it. You know what I mean? So uh, apparently this gentleman has made maps before. It's not like this is the first one. So I don't really know what was going through his head when he decided to have a bunch of rocks clipped through everything. But uh, despite the fact that the visuals are certainly not the map's strong suit, uh, we can presumably still talk a little bit about gameplay. At least a little bit. That's what I like to do here when I'm doing these videos. So um, I guess I will just talk about the rotation to B because this is indeed the simplest approach. Uh, certainly a frustrating area of, and links back to the visuals, of course, a frustrating element of g taking gunfights, uh, particularly when your terrorist model is such as this. Uh, you actually blend in pretty well with some of the scenery around here, especially the natural scenery. That, to me, is kind of like an obvious thing. I, I don't really know what would be a better model. Perhaps he tried all of them and this is the best one that fit, uh, as far as terrorists go. Uh, but honestly, uh, it's really, really difficult to find some of the people here. And, I mean, I can just show you. Well, I guess we'll show two different examples here. I think, um, obviously, the white vest on the terrorist would make you think that he doesn't blend in at all. But it's mostly that when he's moving and you're also dealing with, like, some of the glare from over here, it can actually be very, very difficult to pinpoint exactly where he is. And the uh, low contrast of his head to everything else also doesn't help. Uh, try to land headshots, of course. Uh, the CT seems a bit more problematic at its face, but I haven't had any problems fighting CTs on this map. Or, Well, I can't say I haven't had any problems, but I've had less problems. So I guess the, the premise of this map is that we have this, this aircraft carrier uh, vehicle ship thing, and it was beached like a whale. So that's kind of neat, I guess. Oh yeah, let me turn on god mode real quick. I don't kill myself by volley, vaulting through the air. So this is the rotation to B site anyway. Um, and I guess for whatever it's worth about my complaint about the visuals, this is an area you're not going to be taking too many gunfights in, generally speaking. Uh, but I can imagine, uh, just because of how open this map is, it kind of reminds me of like a Halo map or something. Uh, generally speaking, when you have a situation where you can have giant op angles like this, um, you're probably dealing with an... <laughs> Well, a map that's going to be very, very difficult to get a read on. Like, especially since there's almost no time to kill. Like, the reason why I say it reminds me of a Halo map is because in Halo, you'd have wide open environments like this because the vehicles were meant to be a part of it, because time to kill was not as uh, short. I guess that might be a controversial point, but when you have, like, rifle-on-rifle -rifle gameplay... Uh, generally speaking, the, the guns did take some time. Obviously, snipers and some vehicle shots and some other heavy artillery, heavy weapons could kill you in one hit. But it doesn't even ma matter, really, because it wasn't, uh, like, there, there was respawns in Halo. So it made sense. Like, a lot of the gameplay elements made a bit more sense when it comes to the time to kill and the open environments. In Counter-Strike, this does not really work out unless you change some elements of the gameplay. I would not even be that uh, miffed if... Invalid Nick decided to package a rules update, a game rules update or something that would facilitate better play. Now, obviously, he can't just go and add vehicles into the game properly, but uh, despite the, fa the fact that he can't do that, he could at least maybe uh, tune down gravity. I think he, I saw some posts where he was talking about trying to do some zero gravity or, or lower gravity or something like that. He could do something like that if he wanted to. He could certainly increase uh, health or something or change some weapons. Although I think some of that stuff would require external third-party mods or whatever, which I'm sure are a pain in the ass to load up in, in this environment. So uh, perhaps there were some technical limitations to such a, an idea, but I would be much more uh, receptive to his map design being the way that it is, at least in this particular area that we see so far, 
Uh, and indeed, this exter exterior is not like a one-off thing. It, it's pretty common to have really, really large open areas in this map. And so I would be much more receptive to that if you couldn't just get picked off from literally any angle before you even know that you are targeted at all and have that be a very pivotal element because there are no respawns. So as a, a map that's designed for a 5v5, you know, two double bomb site, like defusal map, it's not going to work out. So uh, that already is pretty damning. But again, I don't really know what his motivation was here. It seems like Nobody who has made maps before would make a map like this and expect it to work as a defusal map in terms of 5v5. Un I mean, I guess uh, one point in his favor, um, this only is pivotal if CTs are rotating outward and they get picked off and CTs don't have to rotate outward, but that still cuts off like almost half the map from the CTs being able to move out without get risking some opper camping in some very bizarre location that is difficult to spot them in as we already discussed with the readability issues. So uh, th that's why I wanted to labor the point about the visuals a little bit, and as well as, of course, about the general map design being so open. I don't mind necessarily having a lot of, lot of open areas, but uh, they don't really work in Counter-Strike, at least not to this degree. Not when they're as open as this. So there's a bit of a, a very long corridor over there that you can take if you want to go to A. I'll show that off later. For now, we'll go to B. Uh, this map has been receiving updates. Uh, I think the latest it was updated was the 1st of March, and I'm recording this on the 3rd, so obviously very recent. Uh, perhaps he will continue to uh, fix some of the visuals, and uh, I don't know what, what he actually changed. I didn't look at the patch notes. I just saw that it was updated recently. This is, of course, the B-bomb site. More of the same kind of complaint about uh, op angles and, and just in general stuff that you have to worry about. Um, you can indeed uh, gra you know, jump up over here as a CT, and I guess obviously you can do that as a T if you want to. Um, I don't really know how I feel about that, generally speaking. I think uh, there's just so many different areas that you have to check when you're coming in here. And uh, admittedly, you could, in theory, smoke some of this stuff off, but there's no open skybox in this particular bomb site. So I don't know how you would intend to smoke any of this off. Maybe you could find some sort of lineup. Like, I guess that would probably block enough visibility for you to plant in the smoke. Or then you could do some sort of, like, jump across, because there is a bit of a gap there, but I don't think... I guess... Yeah, it's probably not not enough for oppers to actually pick. It doesn't seem like it is anywhere. Yeah. So, I, I suppose something like that could be fine. You know? Again, that's something like this. My concern is, like, if it does You don't really know... I don't know how to make that super consistent. So maybe you could do something like that. Well, you can't do it that in particular, but something like this maybe bit, might be better. Let you cross over sort of like nuke uh, when you're running towards secret. So this time you're on a bomb site. But you have to do that because, I mean, either that or you, uh, when you're coming over into the middle area of the map, you could pressure the opera who's standing over there. But I, the fact that he has like a little safe area to be in over here tells me that maybe you can't do that. So like if he can get into this position and pick you, then you have to throw that smoke, which blocks him's ability to see you for the most part. And then maybe accompany that with a flash or adjust the smoke a little bit to the left. So I'm, I'm trying to think of how T's could even gain access into this bomb site by going through the the B the dedicated B pathway. They can't flank around here, unlike the A bomb site where they can sort of flank around. It's not like you can go tread some water. Can you even uh, do you survive if you fall down here? I don't actually know. This might be one of those maps that kills you when you touch the water. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, there's just a wall over here. This is, um, I don't necessarily mind this in theory, but this would be a really annoying angle to take, like, a save from, or to, like, as CT's rotating into this bomb site. if you're coming in here, and I don't know why that man's stuck, but whatever. You know, you're, you're walking up here, you're not going to be expecting to just get annihilated. Like, wh where would you actually be? Would, you, would this be a vis visible angle, generally speaking? I guess not. You'd have to, like, double boost or something, so maybe it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you just pop your head up here real quick. I don't know. That is a little rough. I guess it's risky. Like, it's kind of one and done, but you can be a real nuisance if you're back here, and landing on here doesn't take it, give you any fall damage because you're landing on water, so... Another thing that's really annoying about the cliffs, uh, the rocks in general, is that their pathfinding does not seem to be uh, very well tested. So, or the, rather their collision is, it does not seem to be very well tested. So you can often slide off. Uh, it feels very clumsy. Sometimes it feels, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't feel 
all that great to me when I'm when I was playing around with the map and trying to figure out how to scale certain areas. But I guess that's the, the B bomb site in a nutshell. One smoke kind of neutralizes the op threat and uh, fr from the upper area anyway. Uh, so that would result in a lot of spams probably. You could probably accompany that with some flashes. And obviously if you end up pincing with mid, uh, anybody who's standing over here trying to support has to worry about a backstab play. Uh, it's worth noting that in middle, as I briefly come over here real quick, I'll go over this in more detail later on, you can, if you take control of this area, run up here into this high ground and see into the B-bomb site yourself as the terrorists. So any defenders over here are in a really weird position. Like I said, this, this map is weird in terms of how open it actually is and how uh, little cover you actually seem to have uh, it, when inside the areas that are closest and most uh, important to holding the bomb sites, including the, the B bomb site itself. The A bomb site is technically outside, but it's just weird how you have almost no cover uh, within the area uh, that, like, for rotations purposes or whatever. You have almost no cover. Like, you'd, you'd think you could hide behind all this stuff, but you kind of stick out like a sore thumb over here. I guess you have to hit some highlight plays or something. I, maybe maybe not. Maybe you could have like an opera over here um, and a, a rifler like holding this angle or something, waiting for them to come up there. But he has, also has to, sort of like similar to Nuke Hut, um, he's got to worry about people coming in like over here and, and he's got to be watchful of that. So you might actually want to be up in this area. I don't even know how you boost into there though. Can you boost into there? I'm not sure. Self-boost, of course, is what I'm concerned about. I, if you can't self-boost, it's probably not something that can happen. I'm surprised you can't uh, get on top of this, though. I thought it would be something similar to a, a bomb train, but no, it's a, it does not allow you to. You can't get on there either. You can hide in here. This is a, a real fuck you spot. If you hide in there, you're a piece of shit, but... Um, yeah, so I guess you would have to boost as CTs. Crouch, boy. Uh, okay. I'll try to remember my crouch key next time. Anyway, yeah, so you could boost yourself up here as CTs to get a, like, a, a more laid-back position uh, to see if they're going to do an upper rush, but this doesn't afford you too much of safety if you're trying to also peek down middle as CT, so... Yeah, that's definitely an interesting angle, and one that I feel like is probably a little too rough, uh, as far as I'm concerned, so... I don't know, man. That is a that is a weird one. Just it doesn't feel like there's enough. Like the tools are sort of there for both teams, but they don't feel refined enough for my liking. Like just how open this area is, and then how you can either. It's almost like this map was designed, and it's like a it's like fifteen percent bigger than it should be. Like if you made the players move fifteen percent faster then they could, like, clear distances like this in reasonable manners. Some of the areas, anyway, the more open areas. Again, it feels like a map from a different game or something. Also, you can't self-boost up here, it doesn't look like, but you can jump over here. Yeah, I don't know. Some of the movement seems uh, correctly coordinated, but I don't know, man. I don't know yet. I'll, I'll try to continue making up my mind. I, I'm trying to see... Like, I, I don't want to take the most, uh, or least, charitable position possible. But to me, it definitely seems like there was... There's, like, a lot of immediate things that stick out to me, and whenever I feel that way, it's... It's difficult to come to any other conclusion, like... The map maker just didn't think this through, is the first thing that I'm thinking. So... <coughs> I'm, I'm going to continue trying to figure out what exactly the uh, map maker's intention was. I guess he wanted you to be able to have a religious experience and feel the power of Jesus as you walk on water. Anyway, this is sort of like what I was talking about with the uh, the sliding nature of the the rocks. If, you, if you're going to make it so that I can't get up here, like that's intended for gameplay purposes, it just has to be more clear. I don't really care if it's yes or no on the mobility, Obviously, more mobility or less mobility, that's like a tool, a balancing lever that you use, depending on the position. But in its current state, it looks like maybe I should be able to do it. And that uncertainty is what going to contribute to player frustration as they're coming out of spawn. This is CT spawn. 
So the first thing CTs are going to experience if they try to like jump up here to get like a little bit of a faster rotation and they fail this jump because they jumped to the left too much, um, they they are not going to be too happy. So something like that, smoothing that out, you know, figuring out if that's what you want them to be able to do, just uh, making the gameplay. Uh, and visuals more in line with each other is all I ask about that. So, there you go. Anyway, this is indeed the A ramp or A site. Ticker tape or whatever this is. I don't think you can plant. Oh, you can actually get out of here, out of the bomb site by moving to the left over here. Okay. But yeah, since you can't even jump up on any of these areas, you also can't plant there. I don't know why you're trying to blow up explosives or uh, radioactive shit, but whatever. And the A rotation, obviously like the CTs to rotate into mid have to rotate through A, which is somewhat interesting, but because the map is so big, you're probably going to leave one guy lurking down here. You can also, oh, maybe you can't anymore. I think that was sealed off. Yeah, th so there used to be this giant underground passageway that would take you down here, but now it's just a tiny hallway. So I played, uh, I played the map a little bit in an earlier version, uh, as well as more recently today, and I was wondering where that other path passageway went. It turns out it's completely gone. There also seems to be a bit less movement maneuverability. This area used to be a lot more open, and now it's a little bit more linear, which is probably him realizing that it doesn't really work out when you have such an open area. I don't know what's going to happen to the whole T area. <laughs> if it, it goes the same way as this, that's probably just what it needs to be in order to be a, a Counter-Strike map. But yeah, this is one of those examples of really long corridors. Not only is this corridor kind of long by itself, it then opens up to, into a much longer wrap where you can do nothing to impact the rest of the site. Now, I don't know if the solution to this is to have a sort of passageway down here that's like a, a one-way drop of some sort from mid into there. So at least when you're playing the A wrap site, uh, either SCT and mid, you can wrap around and jump down if you have to, or uh, as the CT holding here or a T holding here, you have to be wary of somebody falling down that way, like a one-way uh, nuke vent or something like that. Maybe there could be a ladder as well to go all the way up. I don't know. But the something like that to, to connect it back to the rest of the map, I think would be welcome in that situation. In fact, just based on how radically this map has changed in terms of just this area alone since I last looked at this map before today, which was only a week or two ago, I feel like. I almost wonder if this map is... I'm, I'm wondering how it managed to make it into the finalists is, is really what I'm wondering, because if the map can undergo such insane changes with not that much time between the changes, after already being declared as a finalist, it's very clear to me that the outline was not like fully iterated through, right? We're not seeing the final result of a careful, like a careful construction of a map. You know what I mean? At least that's, that doesn't, that's what it feels like to me is like, obviously iteration's great, um, but this is not, I don't think that this would be in line. I wouldn't think that this would be in line with the level, of, the caliber of, of outline that we've been seeing from a lot of the other uh, map makers. Uh, perhaps except for Ivory, of course, but. Ivory is a map. Oh, okay. Don't look down. Ivory is a map uh, had some similar issues to this really long A wrap that we discussed. Very, very similar in this particular case. But this map has also changed so much more radically than I've seen Ivory change. Uh, I, admittedly, I haven't looked back at it in a while. But yeah, I just wonder what was going on there. I was kind of hoping you could uh, fall down here and stand on that. Something like this. And then jump back up. Would be epic. But anyway, so this is like the the wrap, the A wrap, A long. Very, very long corridor. Some cover along the way. Very much like a Halo map. It feels like, like a Halo campaign level as opposed to a multiplayer map. Not crazy about it. And uh, not really crazy about the lack of sh shading down here either. Like it feels like the... Uh, the, the shadows were not baked in or something. I don't know what happened there. Maybe the shadows are already active, though. I, I don't really know what's going on there. <coughs> anyway, I don't know how to fix that either. Um, 
I didn't notice any issues with the bots mo moving around. Sometimes that happens with maps, especially if they've received changes. Uh, but yeah, I didn't see any issues with uh, large numbers of bots moving around the map, so that's cool, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we'll talk about the some of the more like thin extremities. The map uh, doesn't really have a lot of in-between areas. It's either super open or super tight, like this corridor here. Now, this corridor will lead you out into this lower level, which I think is also new. And you can come up this ladder, which is like the rotation over here. This adds a little bit of an, a wrinkle. I feel like maybe they're, because of how powerful this could be, but despite the fact that it's like super, takes super long to get to, maybe there should be some unavoidable sound cue that you make, like a door that must be opened somewhere here, so that CTs could theoretically reach it, uh, you know, press the door, and then uh, walk away as like a sound cue bait or something. Like I'm thinking similar to, if you think about the lower bomb slide on Nuke, CTs have to make some noise by breaking glass or opening a door in order to get into the site and start the plant. That's valuable information for CTs, but it can also be used to fake. So if you end up doing something similar over here, where Ts have to actually make some noise that the CTs must he then, uh, well, they, like, if they're in the right position anyway, they can hear it. Considering how powerful that ladder wrap can be to kill the guy who's going to be opping from over here most likely, uh, that is super important information. Maybe it's not necessary to require that, but I feel like it wouldn't, it wouldn't rule out sneaky plays because you could just, you know, push E and then wait a long time and then go. But it might end up helping the uh, versatility of uh, CT strategies on the map. Because right now it seems, based on the map size, it seems like CTs are better, uh, best served by like staying relatively close to where they spawn on uh, either site. If you ignore the ladder, you can also rotate to middle. This is the other end of that. So, uh, theoretically, if you feel like it's not safe to cross to get to the ladder over there or to the B-bomb site, and you're on the T-side and you're going to middle, you could just run down here and uh, either go ladder or go B. Obviously, you can go down through the shipping container, which I think is actually one of the strongest points of the map. I'm glad to see that it hasn't changed too much. Insofar as you have a lot of, ro uh, you used to have, you used to have to actually jump across to get here. I think there's room for you to take multiple angles and still be impactful, either on top or below, and from both ends of the spectrum. Right, CTs and Ts can both use it. I think it's one of those examples of a high value element of the game. I'm disappointed that you can't boost into some of the other areas. I understand from balance, but then there needs to be something that's more obvious so that players don't try that uh, because they will get pranked by the level design. I mean, obviously with enough rope memorization, it doesn't really matter, but when you're doing custom maps, it pays to be very clear with your gameplay, uh, like visually speaking, it pays to be very clear with readability and what, what you can and cannot do as a player, what, uh, what things you can or cannot make as far as jumps are concerned. So I would like to see some changes made to the props, but outside of that centerpiece over there, which very much is a centerpiece in terms of quality as well, I mean, the extremities are, are interesting, but also fairly linear right now. Where am I? The ex extremities feel like, you know, you kind of walk down here for a while. It takes you like three or four seconds to get from where you would make the turn, right? Like, we'll just wait until 3550 and then hold W. So you can go for almost four seconds without having to uh, make a turn, or maybe it was almost three. And then otherwise you do another two or one and a half or whatever to get to the other turn. And I guess it's not too bad, but it's... Uh, I definitely feel like the timing could be better. You could, uh, could shrink that down a little bit. I don't exactly know how you would end up doing that. Maybe you'd push this room a little bit to the right to give more movement. Uh, capability over in this side hall area, as uh, the top left tells us, and then feeding into the B bomb site. Maybe you could widen this door a little bit, I don't know. Something to provide the players with a little bit more maneuverability. Particularly, I, th I find that the best approaches to bomb sites can be played when many members of the same team want to stick together. Like, for example, Inferno Banana. It can support a staggered approach of all five Ts. This one also can, but because it's so 
congested by comparison. Like the actual passageway is so small in, in terms of how like the seconds required to get over here uh, from one end of it to the other uh, compared to Inferno Banana. It doesn't really feel like it gives you as much maneuverability or it affords you as much maneuverability. So, yeah. I definitely think that uh, there could be some more attention to detail there. And also, I don't really know what was going on with the design of this, but for me, it, it feels a little weird <laughs> that we come over here and there's this doorway. And then this doorway is... Uh, I don't even know if it's lined up. It doesn't look quite lined up, but maybe it is. Uh, either way, it's like way longer over here. So I don't know. But uh, either way, it, I, I do think that uh, visual sensibility aside, you probably should move this out to the right a little bit more and uh, thus shrink this rotation and figure out something to do with here, here to make it less of a lengthy rotation around because right now you're not really doing a whole lot. Uh, maybe the... Another wrinkle could be to add more power to this area and then do the suggestion that I did where I suggested where you have an unavoidable sound cue where you can either go up there to the B-bomb side or you can take a right into middle or something, some some other position into middle, like maybe up here or something, um, that's only accessible if you go lower and then ax this position altogether or, I don't know, something like that. Then there's more utility to going to the b bombsite area uh, even if you want to rotate to A after the fact, whereas right now you have to do a really long and noisy rotation if you want to go from B to A using this lower area. But I don't know. I'm not super stoked about this map in terms of gameplay. I didn't have a great time playing it. Um, and I do think that a lot of that is due to the, the visuals being distracting more than uh, helpful. <laughs> and... Uh, perhaps it was also a lack of familiarity with each individual iteration because uh, I must have played on two or three different versions now. And some pretty significant changes as we, I was uh, discussing earlier, which unfortunately I did not I did not capture that on video. So I can't really go back and show you what it look, used to look like. But I will say that the changes so far have been positive. S uh, simplifying this area seems proper, making it so that there's less angles of attack for CTs to worry about on the A-bomb site. Like, obviously, they have an immediate rotation advantage in terms of timing to get here, but they used to have to worry about here and, he like, here-ish, um, like, behind the bomb site, as well as, obviously, the shipping container and the B bomb site rotation in terms of an A hit. So, uh, obviously, once the, you're in a post plan situation, you have to worry about that as T's as well, but generally, you've already taken and held some sort of map control by then, so you kind of have a feel for where the remaining CTs are, whereas you don't really know about that with regards to T's. That's some epic culling, but okay. Yeah, just call that rock, but not the trucks. Prank. I guess um, the lack of utility <coughs> from grenades means that it's very difficult for CTs to, or rather T's to pr you know, put pressure on CTs. I don't know if there's actually an open skybox. It looks like there is. So you can probably line up some smokes, like that one smokes off CT, uh, the CT rotation. So I don't even know where that was. It was something like this. And then it was a step throw. What are you doing, step throw? Yeah. Well, you'd want it a little bit to the right of my first throw in order to actually hit that spot, but... I don't know, man. I'm not actually sure what you would do in this situation. Maybe you could line yourself up with some shadows. Pray those don't change. But either way, I guess the fact that this is an open skybox means you can probably find some <coughs> lineups to hit the shipping container on the other side so that you can uh, cross. But after that, it's like, take some fights, clear some angles, make sure they didn't boost up here. Right? And then, you know, clear that. And I guess that would be everything. They can't, they would have to boost up here. So I guess they could do that too. The CTs could boost up there if they wanted to. So you'd have to clear that. But as long as you get here relatively fast, you don't really have to worry about that. You clear those angles, you come over here, and then you can start to set up your execute. I'm sure like you can find some loose smoke that would 
help you take the site. Like that will allow you to come down here and uh, clear some angles. Man, I guess you would have to have somebody above the shipping container pushing forward with the person going lower so that he, the guy above would be able to like draw some attention while the guy below is able to get through. I don't know. Something would have to happen there anyway. Well, that didn't work. I was standing in the way. But, yeah. The bombsite being so far back, too, means that you probably don't even want this to be your primary mode of execution. You probably actually want to either hit it from the B-bomb side, at which point you probably already got control of it, or you want to hit it from wrap beach. But yeah, you want, probably want to hit it from long. You're, I would assume you're taking op duels around here as CT, which means it could be as early as here because you'd be standing over there. This is such a, a noisy and foreign, unfamiliar area in terms of visual palette for Counter-Strike, so I don't know what's going on there. And it's also a reminder to actually get your materials configured, but otherwise, yeah, I don't know. As far as the gameplay is concerned, nice lens flare. Um, I would say, You know, pay some more attention to the rotations. Make sure that you're not going down corridors for too long, which you definitely are right now. I mean, even to just get anywhere from T-Start, you are walking a long way in a straight line. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's fine in terms of the flat rotations, but I don't know. I also fixed that. That's annoying. Well, I guess uh, I may end up doing some revisit as far as the uh, the map goes, but so far it has not been uh, super spectacular. It's definitely been different than a lot of the other maps that I've gone through, so maybe there's some value in the, taking a look at it as far as uh, you know, how important it is to stay within some of the constraints of what Counter-Strike maps tend to have as far as design paradigms, with particular uh, mention going towards the sheer openness of this particular map compared to the other maps. I guess I have the coronaviruses and I don't know why my voice is so hoarse today, but I just feel like there's too many winding dick roads. I feel like there's way too many uh, lengthy rotations walking in straight lines or might as, what might as well be straight lines. What passes for straight in the modern era. This is kind of a straight line, I guess. So yeah, I mean, that's my, my overall take. Maybe I'll revisit this map when it's been significantly updated. Uh, I guess after the contests are announced, I might I might do some sort of like package thing where I I go through all of the maps in their final forms and I I go over what's been uh, modified in them or something. Um, I don't know what I'll do with that. I'm not necessarily writing the whole thing off right now, but I definitely don't feel too great about it. So I'll leave the viewers. Let them decide what they think of this particular map. I'm personally not sold. Oh, there's a bird. I thought I saw some shadows. I can't commit animal cruelty. It's not the right kind of bird. I have to be a flightless bird like a chicken. Or a colon.